Oh, hello everyone. Well, 100 installments of the Jerry Anderson podcast. Who would have thought it? Certainly not me. Anyway, you've already heard me more than enough for one week, but Marina here would like to say something to mark this important occasion. Unfortunately, she can't, so instead, she's going to get to press the button today. Hmm, and she looks quite happy about this selection. So Marina, what have we got today? Oh. Well, obviously anything would be an improvement after last week, even watching paint dry, but I think she's made an excellent choice for Pod 100. Here's Thunderbirds with the Cham Cham. What is a Cham Cham? So we're finally back with Thunderbirds. It's been a while since we were last here, and uh, ironically, for the, the biggest and most successful Anderson series, uh, Thunderbirds is the one that uh, seems to be taking the... Uh, the, the longest time to turn up on the randomizer, but here it is, appropriately enough for Pod 100, and this is an episode that um, I really like, and I've always really liked this one, and I think this is a a favourite of of a lot of people. It's not like the absolute greatest, um, but it is it is something really different, and unlike certain other times Thunderbirds did something really different, this actually works pretty well because it's a nice um, blending of the sort of military stuff as you can tell by the music we are at a Air Force base right now with the um, the sort of spy stuff it's it's not um, so heavily spy skewed um, as the show often was around near, near the end of season one anyway lovely model of this uh, Air Force plane rolling out our security systems are operational sir well, it shouldn't be a thing to worry about yeah than we thought last time. We were wrong. It's probably not a good omen that the uh, equally ill-fated Red Arrow from Edge of Impact was parked at the edge of the runway there, but I do love this uh, this uh, Air Force bomber, fighter, cargo plane, whatever it is, model, which I think was repurposed into the um, the bomber that Blue and Oka use in, in Flight to Atlantica. I could be wrong. Hitchens, have the crew been given their sealed orders yet? Yes, sir. They should be opening them about now. And of course, the uh, the officers in this control tower, they're on the same uh, control tower interior set as uh, know where we got to deliver the goods to London Airport, which was always a, a, another sort of recurring thing in uh, in Thunderbirds and then also throughout Scarlet Joe and uh, Secret Service. If you have a scene in a control tower, it is always the, con the same control tower. The only danger in this operation could arise if an enemy were to find out where your aircraft is at any given time. <laughs> I love that line. The only way things could go wrong is if things somehow went wrong. Is that clear? Perfectly, sir. Break silence. We'll be dead in five minutes anyway, so you'll probably get your wish. I'll sure be glad when we've delivered this little cargo. Yay! Unidentified um, rockets, missiles. Poseidon Missile, ooh. And now, Radio Maxwell is proud to bring back to the microphone here at Paradise Peaks, the Cass Carnaby 5, with their great hit number currently topping the international chart, The Dangerous Game. Yeah, because uh, a military flight would be uh, listening to the, the, the local music station just as they were taking off on a secret mission, but uh, we'll let it go for the sake of the the story. Also, it is such a wonderful tune. You're even listening to it on Tracy Island. It's distracting Jeff and Scott from their looking at map time. Must be serious if they're getting distracted from their maps. Gordon's listening to it in Tintin's room, or, or vice versa. I don't know whose room that is. Virgil randomly comes in. Even he knows not to interrupt the music. Um, okay. Even on Thunderbird 5, everyone's listening to this music. Although it must get distracting trying to listen to music with all the uh, the chatter of the other radio signals the, the station's picking up. Gee, I hope Tintin's listening. She really digs this number. Yeah, it's great. This I'm still in the show. This is a surprise. Central Control. This is RTL2 calling Central Control. We are under attack. 
three fighters with some kind of oval markings. And it's lovely. This model is, is, is lovely on its own, but seeing it get blasted and exploded and going down in flames, oh, it looks so pretty. Pictures. You got a fix? Yes, sir. The relief aircraft are on their way. That is a stock footage of Air Sea Rescue are on their way, sir. It's the third time this has happened, Shiloh. The third time. How many times has that happened, sir? Oh, the whole tail section is on fire. That is gorgeous. And presumably that's it for those poor pilots. I wonder if it was a coincidence. What are you talking about, Alan? It's that tune, Dangerous Game. Just before the transporter crashed, they were playing it on Radio Maxwell. Well, so what? What's unusual about that? You think it's not a good tune, huh? You're a commie spy, huh? I'll break your face if you say that's not a good tune. I love Scott's sudden sort of defensiveness about this song. What are you getting at, Alan? Well, Dad, it's simply that each time these transporter planes have been attacked, the Cass Carnaby Five have been giving a live performance of their number. Live? That was pretty observant of you. But surely the Cass Carnaby... Oh, Alan's got a little watch hanging from his belt. I've never noticed that before. Uh, could be a connection, you know. Where are they now? Right now they're doing a season at Paradise Peaks. Brains is reading a science muse, uh, a science magazine just named Science. Right. What do you think, Brains? It's certainly an interesting observation that Alan has made. I'll get John in the satellite to radio us a, a recording of that Cass Carnaby broadcast and see what I make of it. Who? Right. Oh. oh, John. John, the other one. Yeah, okay. And I know just who to send there. So it's over to Creighton Ward Manor, and I, I may have mentioned before, I'm not a huge Lady Penelope fan, but I love the way she's used in this. And I love this establishing shot of her in the garden, on the gazebo, with puppet butterflies flapping around the place. That is such a, it was a simple idea, but it does so much to bring the garden to life. I, I was just wondering, in fact, if I might have the rest of the half to do it off. I thought I might take Cook out for a punt. Why, certainly, Parker. You deserve a break. Thank you, belady. I'll just go and change into something more suitable. So Parker's going to put the moves on uh, on Lil. Presumably it's the same um, cook we saw in Vault of Death. King. Hello, Penny. Jeff here. Why, He's a Jeff, what a pleasant surprise. Penny, I'm organising an investigation into the crashing of these rocket transporters, and I require your assistance. I see. This is one of those times where it's, um... I want you to go to Switzerland, to the Paradise... Uh, International Rescue get involved on a sort of very vague basis. I get that someone needs to investigate, but it's kind of... not really in keeping with International Rescue's line of work. And very often, Jeff would say, No, no, we can't get involved unless, uh... Unless someone's in danger. Oh, Parker. Oh, yes. When Cook sees me in this gear, she'll be like... Putty in me head. Oh, is this a long-term plan, Parker? You've had to, uh, to get with Lil. You can do better, mate. I think you can. You can really do better. Very good, belady. What sort of business will it be this time? Show business, Parker. I believe you have connections in the theatre world. Oh yes, belady. Excellent connections. Wanda Lamour. Well, who the heck's Wanda Lamour, anyway? She's by way of being a very provocative talk singer. Ah, uh, look, Nosey. I'd really love to do you a favor, just for old time's sake, but I run a big agency here. I can't. So this talent agent, Maxie, has got, um... Hello? Now that... He's clearly an old uh, associate of Parker's. Because I was in the States last week, and I was only saying to Pudgy Patterson... Huh? But, but on the wall, he has got, um... I thought he was... Inside. Photos of lots of uh, recurring Thunderbirds guest puppets. There's the Duchess of Royston, there's the uh, director guy from Martian Invasion, there's uh, a, a puppet who's already appeared in this episode. He was one of the Control Tower staff. Uh, I think he went on to be Hooper in Atlantic Inferno. So I would imagine that a lot of these are the um, photos that the uh, AP Films team were using to pick out guest puppets to appear in, in episodes as uh, as hopefully Mr. And and Mr. Anderson mentioned uh, earlier in this, this very fine instalment of the Jerry Anderson podcast. And you keep your mouth shut. Okay, then. What's this Juana Lamour like? Is she blonde or brunette? Oh, 
So considering it's a rush job, Penelope has apparently had time to commission a painting of herself as a singer. Good. I think that ought to do the trick. Come Meanwhile, Parker... Oh, big pardon, miss. Uh, but I was looking for her ladyship. ...has learned how to humour people. So you didn't recognise me? Well, it you looks... You thought a random young lady had wandered into the mansion unnoticed. Well, they say that if you go down well at Paradise Peaks, you'll go down well anywhere. Well, I we just... need to a cut to a shot of um, Kenneth Williams or Charles Hawtrey or someone from the carry-ons going, Ooh, at that. Unfortunately, I can't do it on, uh, on audio because it's a very visual image. So Tintin's off on an adventure as well. Tintin, you're clear to go. In her uh, Ladybird jet, which only appeared, uh, I think, a couple of times. You live on Tracy Island, get your own personal jet. I wonder if everyone's got one. Does Kirano have one? Does Grandma have one? You'll see, Alan, uh, repeated melodic patterns from the Cass Carnaby group could be used to impede the efficiency of the aircraft. But brains, the transporters, each time reported, they were under attack. It was the fighters that shot them down. True, but perhaps the music was affecting their ability to retaliate. Uh, however, uh, I agree with you that there could be something in the music. I also like this side of the story as well. Brains and, and to a lesser extent, Alan, carrying out a technical investigation at the same time as Penelope and Tintin are, are carrying out an actual investigation at Paradise Peaks Hotel. And we're on our way there now by cable car, and it's so lovely. And the music is wonderful. And, and considering it was probably a very small model, the, the line of very small trees in front of the hotel make it look so much bigger than it probably was. And this cable car is lovely. This is just such a pretty episode. Now that... That receptionist at Paradise Peaks, he looks like the Maxi Puppet, who we just saw a little while ago. I'm sure it's not, but it looks very similar. Anyway, we're in the lounge at Paradise Peaks. And who else is here? Well, a lot of people are here, a lot of familiar faces, but uh, Cass Carnaby 5, there they are. Um, oh, there's Cass himself, very smooth on the piano. And the rest of the band. I just can't believe they've got anything to do with the sabotage business. I can't. No, because they're pretty. The drummer. Oh, I love the drummer. He's got a bit of the Stu Dapples look about him. And, um... You know, that the, the movements of these puppets playing the instruments aren't 100% convincing. Um, I mean, the bass doesn't seem to have any strings. At least, I'm, I mean, I'm watching this in standard definition, maybe it does, and the, the picture quality is just too bad, but if he, it does have strings, the puppet certainly isn't working them. But, he, somehow, it doesn't matter because the puppets are so caricatured that the movements don't have to, to match precisely what the instruments are doing. And I, re I really like the look of all the puppets in the band, and I don't remember too many of them reappearing again after this. Isn't he gorgeous? <laughs> careful, Tintin, careful. Keep it together, girl. Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to say hello to our next guest star here at the Peaks. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you... Miss Piggy. Oh, what a surprise! Oh, and now it's snowing, because of course it's snowing. Because I said it couldn't get any prettier. <laughs> it was real nice of you to come round and see me like this. Uh, when did you get here? Just today. I came with Miss Lamour. Oh, yeah. Miss Lamour. The lady with a frog in her throat. I must have heard Dangerous Game a million times, but it still knocks me cold every time I hear it, Mr. Carnaby. Oh, me too. It's a fantastic piece of music. You're a bit of a knockout yourself, too, you know. Oh. And I wish you'd call me Cass. Right. Oh, Ray Barrett is doing so, is so smooth with this. Tired of playing that tune. Don't you sometimes... I also wonder why Cass has got a framed photo of the Duchess of Royston on his wall. Um, that to Mr. Olson. Yeah, well... Is that his mother? Is that his grandmother? Whoever it's meant to be, she is downstairs in the hotel watching the show, so, I mean, it could be his mother. So Mr. Olson's your musical arranger? Yeah. Funny guy, but he sure knows the business. Funny? 
In what way? Well, maybe temperamental would be a better word for it. You know, sometimes you'll make a last minute change just before we go on the air. I tell you, it drives us crazy. Still, like I say, he knows the business. And now we have a scene on the dance floor. I mean, how many episodes have a, a scene on the dance floor? He's even got that glitter ball over the... Around, you know, high society oh, keeps me dances. pretty busy. Yeah, that figures. But you're still a lady of mystery. There's Duchess Royston again. Everything and nothing. Ooh, Penelope. Oh, that's enough about me. me I'm a desperate woman. All I have left now is my dancing. What else have you heard? That you also are a mystery. Tell me, Mr. Olsen, what is your secret? Of my success or of my good looks? Both, Mr. Olsen. Both. Plenty of beauty sleep, Miss Lamore. And I'm afraid that's my cue to excuse myself from your very charming company. Oh, so soon? So, sum it up with Mr. Olsen. He's a bit suspicious. Psst, lady. Why, Parker? Someone who's not at all suspicious. I've got a job as part-time bouncer, belady. <laughs> I thought I might be more useful to you up here. Oh, he's such a good guy. Oh, Parker, we seem to be having very little success. How I would enjoy one of your splendid cups of tea. Very good, belady. I'll fetch you some up at once. Oh, I love how faithful Parker is to Penelope. And to everybody, really. I did overhear your Mr. Holson talking to Benito, the head waiter. He was saying something about expecting a message tomorrow morning. I wonder what he meant by that. Well, it sounds interesting. Where does Olsen live, Parker? Uh, in a chalet, uh, round the other side of the mountain. Considering he's only been here about five minutes, Parker's got more done than Penelope and Tintin combined at this point. I'm a fake. Right. Let's report it to Mr. Tracy. But it is nice to have a sort of uh, most, a mostly girls only outing. For this trip. International rescue. Calling international. I suppose it's a shame they couldn't bring Grandma along, but uh, there we go. Those apple pies won't bake themselves. Brayman. Brayman sat in the corner of the room. Uh, well, Mr. Tracy, I've definitely established that there's some kind of electronic pattern in the music. You mean the music was really used as a code? Well, it looks quite likely, but I still got to decode the music before I'm sure there's a code in it, uh, if you see what I mean. Laboratory. Okay, hands up who has heard him, who has always heard that as lavatory, L-A-V. I have. I know a lot of people have that. A lot of other people have as well. Ranger could be the man we're looking for. The thing we don't know is whether he is working alone or whether all the group are involved. <laughs> And if the episode couldn't get even more beautiful, it's now time to go skiing. And this setup is on a similar principle to the, the rolling roads, uh, runways from which the model aircraft would take off from. Just have a rolling, snowy patch of ground for Penelope and Tintin to, uh, to ski across. some lovely pretty supercar music all building up to this gorgeous shot of them skiing down the hill which I mean they don't hold on it for too long probably wisely because you can just about see that the um, the depth of field isn't quite there but just in that split second oh it looks so good so we're now in Mr. Olsen's chalet he's got a gazelle model on the table we know who likes gazelles Ooh, he also has a very funky looking computer. So Penelope and Tintin have arrived, just in time to see him sit down at the uh What's that machine he's working at? I don't know. Some kind of electronic computer. Oh thanks, Tintin, that narrows it down. Yeah, it's uh three screens, lots of flashing lights, and uh coloured keys that he's bashing. Tintin's gonna take some pictures of this. <laughs> So as Olsen plays his tune, the um, hieroglyphy-type characters on the screen have been replaced with a secret message telling him to blow up another rocket transporter at two o'clock. Come on, we've got to warn Jeff. 
And there are publicity photos taken of Tintin and Penelope inside the chalet. Um, which I would have to presume are not a deleted scene, they just thought it looked good. Anyway, the girls are skiing away. Give me Benino, quickly. Oui, monsieur. Hello? I see. I see. Oh, I know. Well, Parker's overheard that little bit of sinisterness. And of course, skiing uphill is a bit harder than skiing downhill. I mean, I don't have too much experience in skiing. I um, once did one of those indoor ski courses and um, crashed over a fence. But uh, Penelope and Tintin have been fitted with ski thrusts, which um, I don't know how practical those are because they're just jets of air that they attach to their backs. I would have thought that would be more inclined to knock you over than um, help you get up the hill, but there we go. I am not brains. So Benito Headwaiter is here to snipe at the girls, but luckily... Good old Parker hid in the back of his car, which is an impressive feat considering there's no... What is going on up there? There's no roof on the car. That's Parker. Oh my goodness. And even though I'm not a fan of this kind of physical comedy in um, in the Super Mario Nation shows. I mean, this... They appear to be heading this... This image of Parker and Benito falling down a hill and turning into a snowball. It's very sort of Fireball XL 5 e especially with the wah, wah, wah music. Something about that kind of stuff in this episode just works. Oh, I... I must apologise for the... Because it is so... ...entrance, belady. ...atypical. ...to apprehend him somehow. And this, I think the setting, the, the mountain resort setting, has... ...lends it a sort of... I'm afraid the masquerade is over. ...an air of whimsy that somehow makes stuff like this work. ...dispose of you and Miss Tinted. Of course, we get a better example of that later in the episode. They know we're on to their little game. We must get back to the hotel and contact Jeff Tracy. And we'll have to hide him away somewhere. Yes, I think the broom cupboard's the best place for him, Miss... Out of sight, out of mind, as the saying goes. He can host CBBC, my lady. We'll be a long way from here. Of course, we'll have to give him a, a puppet. Jeff, urgent news. We've traced the men who've been sabotaging the transporter planes. Good work, Benny. Brains, are you there? I want you up here right away. I'm on my way. Oh, of course. Why didn't I think of it before? It's a cham cham. A cham cham. What's a cham cham, brains? A cham cham is a new electronic machine that is sensitive to ultrasonic harmonics and microtones. Oh, of course. For the longest time as a kid, I thought a cham cham was actually a real thing, and I get that it is, it is just basically another name for a computer that decodes things. But um, also, I remember this scene it was actually the first clip I ever saw of this episode because I think yes sir when the BBC got to save that next transporter aircraft repeated the series or for the, for the first time the BBC showed the series in 91 into 92 I think that clip of it's a cham cham turned up on uh, one of the Saturday morning kids TV shows I want to say something like going live or live and kicking you know that international before the episode itself had actually been shown on BBC Two. We paid attention to every Nauru telephone in to see he was international rescue. We'd never get any work done. But that's interesting. Washington seems to think they were the real thing. If you redefine the definition of the word interesting to mean something else. Stock of the U.S. Air Force. Just because some kook wants to play musical chairs, is that clear? Yes, sir. No musical chairs today, sir. Oh, he looks so sad. Well, from here on in, it's up to Penelope and Tintin. Only they can save that aircraft from destruction. Oh, I was expecting him to say, well, from now on, it's it's all up to Penelope. It's nice they remember Tintin for a change. Considering that this is probably the last time Tintin gets to play any sort of major role in the series. Until Thunderbird 6, really. Let's try to tune this way tonight. There's just a few minor modifications. But, Mr. Olsen, I, I don't see what the point is. Look, Cass, never mind the objections. Now, you better let the other fellas know. You're on in five minutes. Thanks, Mr. Olson. Oh, but who was hiding behind the uh, dresser? Who was listening in? Cass, 
If you must alter the arrangement, you must change it to our way. Look, Tintin, believe me, if you ask me to play Dangerous Game on three, four time, I'd do it. But uh, I'd still want to know why. Kaz, don't let's go into that again. I can't tell you how I came to be involved in all this. Just trust me, please. Honey, this season at the peaks is the biggest break. I suppose now we're seeing why they didn't send Grandma along, because she wouldn't be able to handle this uh, sort of... Uh, influencing Cass quite the same way that Tintin can. All set to go. Right, Scott. And I do like the sort of... Um, it's a desperate step. The way that Tintin and Penelope are sort of half admitting that they can't... that they're not really who they appear to be, but they can't say what they are, and Cass just kind of accepts it. He's a nice character, is Cass. Anyway, Scott's off to uh, Matthew's Field to have a word with the, uh, the naughty base commander who wouldn't listen. I am happy to present the Cass Carnaby Five. Oh dear, only Penelope can save us now. Oh, there's that line. Mr. Osir has got you. So it's the same crowd of people at uh, in the Paradise Peaks Lounge tonight. Um, yeah, Blanche Carter from City of Fire, Duchess of Royston again. Um, one of the officers from the Ocean Pioneer who appropriately enough looks dead. He's not moving and his eyes look totally gray. <laughs> Meanwhile, at secret evil foreign base somewhere in foreign land. We got a contact at the hotel. Has a message for us. Yes, I am getting a direction on the flight path of the transporter craft. Oh, and there's that, um, countdown thingy that's probably uh, most famous for later appearing in Crater 101. I love about th this episode as well is that it throws up multiple versions of Dangerous Game and then of course there are multiple cover versions because it's such a lovely tune. It really is. And all the, the Barry Gray sort of jazzy lounge music tracks were lovely but this is probably got to be the best of the bunch. When you play that dangerous game you must learn to The message is game. changing. Learn to watch every glance. She's done it. She's changing and the key say, and the call. This is such a clever way to incorporate the Penelope spy stuff. And as I've said, I was never a huge fan of the, um, you know, the, the James Bond influence that crept in with her, especially towards the end of the series. Episodes like Man from MI5 do very little for me. I repeat. Because it's, it's not quite in keeping with the ethos of, of a rescue organization. And I get... You know, I, I get and kind of enjoy the, um, you know, we've got to maintain security at all costs thing. But I, I just think seeing Penelope blowing people away left and right, it just doesn't sit right with the show. If she was a separate show, I'd probably have no problem with it. So it's nice that here we have an episode that's, you know, it's using the Penelope spy stuff, but she's not, she's not murdering anybody <laughs> for a change. Mr. Olsen ain't happy. Dangerous game. Right, Virgil. You better get out there to Paradise Peaks. Penelope and Tintin could be in great danger. Yes, sir. Alan? I probably should have told you to do that earlier, but yes, uh, still, never mind. This is International Rescue calling Matthews Field Control. A short time ago, we tried to tell you that your transporter craft was about to be destroyed by enemy fighters, but you would not listen. What's this all about? I am now to inform you that we have diverted these fighters and they are about to overfly the outskirts of this airfield. That must be the three unidentified aircraft we just received a report about. It was such a minor development, I didn't think to tell you about it until now. Ah, there they are. Naughty enemy planes. It's strange that people say, oh, it's those overmarkings on those planes. 
considering the oval markings are like the smallest part of those planes. Destroy, yes, sir. So, international rescue have done it again. So, naughty foreign jets, presumably shot down, um, which only leaves for Penelope, Tintin, and Parker to uh, make a sneaky getaway in the cable car. Good. The three of them. Now to make sure they don't interrupt any more broadcasts. So he was in the uh, cable car winch control room thingy. That's strange. We've stopped. I can't understand it. Parker, press the alarm bell. Yes, lady. That sounded like the cable car alarm. I almost didn't hear it over the sound of my own smoothness. I don't know why Cass is the only one who hears the cable car alarm. But luckily he does. Okay, Father, I get it. We should be sighting the hotel any moment now. The girls and Parker are trapped in the cable car. It seems like Olsen is cutting the cable. With the world's smallest Olsen. flame cutter thingy. Cut that out! <laughs> Aww. I love Cass and Olsen struggling with each other on the, uh... On the top of the winch thingy, it's... You crazy fool, the cables are free! That car will never stop! What's that? It's Thunderbird 2! Hey, just look at that! He's cut the cable! And now we get one of the most iconic, I think, rescue sequences in the, uh, the entire series of the show. This runaway cable car. Um, only slightly sport by the fact that... The... The length of cable seems to run like three times around the world and then back again because it's just so long. It's no use. The grabs just won't hold. Look, Penelope, you're going to have to give us a hand with this. Let me talk to Parker. And I love him. Gee, this. I hope Parker's got a good head for heights. I do like it when sort of international rescues equipment isn't quite up to the task and someone has to. Uh, it has to be brave, and of course it's always Parker, because he's such a good egg. I also like as well that we don't actually see Parker's reaction to being asked to do this. Because you just know he would... Parker, use this! He would be a bit sort of, oh, oh dear, oh dear. But he would absolutely do it to save, to save the girls. Because he's, he's just, he's just so great as Parker. And it's proof that you don't have to be a member of a... You don't have to be a highly trained member of a secret organisation to uh, to be a hero in the Jerry Anderson universe, which is a nice, uh, nice little message. I would have to guess that the cable car has uh, just passed the 100th mile of its downhill descent. There are some more cables for Parker to uh, attach to the car. He won't make it in time. Come on, Parker. Hurry, Parker. Hurry. Right, Alan. Well, that's it. It's caught the last cable. All attached. No! I also love close-up shots of Thunderbird 2 because it looks so big. Especially when compared to the little cable car in this. Slow the car down now, but Parker's still sat on the roof. <laughs> And there's this little thing called inertia, and another little thing called gravity, and Parker's just had an encounter with them both. Fallen off the front of the cable car. What could have happened to him? Look, there he is. Ah, and he's all right. He's floating down like Mary Poppins because he was using Penelope's umbrella to catch the uh, the cables from Thunderbird 2. In any other episode, I would probably detest such a... Um, you know, probably the uh, biggest slap in the face to the laws of physics since, um, well, since the final episode of Fireball XL5, probably. But here, it's just so perfect. It just fits so well. And we're back at Paradise Peaks Hotel. Cass is playing the piano. No one else is around, except for Penelope and Virgil. Ah, oh, even the lights are being turned out now. Where has Tintin got to? I haven't seen her since the last dance. Uh, oh, uh... Alan and she went out for a breath of air, I think. And tomorrow she's off home again. Oh, well, that's show business. I mean, if I were Penelope and 
Tintin. I wouldn't want to go back to the uh, all cut up about going back to the base tomorrow. The hotel after Cass and the and the fellas. Only having just escaped from the cable car, but hello, goodbye all the time. And you know, it's always nice to get home again. That line. I don't know why. It may be the slow pan away with the happy music and the beautiful shot of the moon over the mountains, but that is one of my favourite moments in all of Thunderbirds. And that is one of my favourite episodes in all of Thunderbirds, to be honest. I am so glad I got to see the Cham Cham again, especially after last week's little disaster. What can I say about that? Just so nice. I really like that for once the, the Penelope spy stuff is integrated with international rescue investigations. I mean, maybe you could make the case that you know there isn't much Thunderbirdsy type action in this, um, but really, it's it's bringing us one of the, the show's greatest strengths, which is a greater focus on the characters, and of course that. Um, that tune, Dangerous Game, is as wonderful as all the characters were making it out to be at the beginning. Nice to have Tintin out on a, you know, a little mission for once. And as I said, for the uh, for the last time, really, until Thunderbird Six, it's just this episode where so many episodes, uh, so many elements that shouldn't really be Thunderbirdsy at all, all thrown together in one, and the result is something pretty magical. Um, yep. A huge fan of the Cham Cham, always have been, think I always will be. Epic.